Audio Jungle. <laughs> Hey guys, Marco here from Aviator Live CS. Welcome back to my channel. Today we'll continue with uh, part two of the fuel system for the Boeing 737-800NG. Uh, let's keep talking about it. And uh, we are going to start with the fuel tanks and fuel pumps today. Main tanks, number one and number two, are integral with the wing structure. The center tank lies between the wind roots within the fuselage area and extends out in the wind structure. So in this picture, you can see this is the center tank and uh, you can see the main tanks. These figures represent approximate amounts of usable fuel. The appropriate weight and balance control and loading manual gives exact figures for all conditions. Okay, each fuel tank uses two YC powered fuel pumps, which are cooled and lubricated by fuel passing through the pump. Center tank pumps produce higher pressure than main tank pumps. And you can see the center tank pumps here. This ensures that the center tank fuel is used before main tank fuel, even though all fuel pumps are operating. Individual pressure sensors monitor the output pressure of each pump. Also, you can see here the main tank pumps. When AC transfer buses lose power, the remaining fuel from center tank cannot be retrieved. Each center tank pump will automatically shut off after a short delay when that pump's sensor detects low output pressure. Note, fuel pump low pressure lights may flicker when tank quantity is low and the airplane is inclined, descent or on the ground with a nose down attitude. So these lights here, they can flicker. Or if you can see it better, these two lights. Okay. Note, center tank fuel pump low pressure lights may flicker when tank quantity is low and the airplane is in cruise. One pump may indicate low pressure sooner than the other due to aircraft attitude and or slight variation between pump inlet position. Low pressure indication may occur after center tank quantity reads zero. Low pressure light flickering can continue for as long as five minutes before the fuel system annunciator light and the master caution lights are illuminated for the associated center tank pump. All right, so let's continue and let's talk about nitrogen generating system NGS. The NGS converts bleed air to nitrogen in rich air. NEA. During all phases of flight, the NEA is delivered to the center fuel tank to reduce flammability of the tank. The operation of the NGS is transparent to the flight crew. It does not require any flight crew action to operate the system, nor are there any flight deck indications. The NGS automatically starts operating after takeoff and runs continuously through climb, cruise, descent, landing, and during taxi for a short period of time. The NGS shoots down after a specified period of time or when bleed pressure is no longer available. The NGS also automatically shoots down during the following not normal flight conditions. Aircraft on the ground and not in test mode, either engine is not running in flight, fire or smoke detection in the cargo or main deck areas, left air conditioning pack overheat, center tank refueling valve is open. And you can see a picture here of the NGS. 
Okay, now let's talk about suction feed. When main tank fuel pump pressure is low, each engine can draw fuel from its corresponding main tank through a suction feed line that bypasses the pumps. As the airplane climbs, the solved air is released from the fuel in the tank due to the decrease in air pressure. This air may collect in the suction feed line and restrict fuel flow. At high altitude, thrust deterioration or engine flame out may occur as a result of the fuel flow reduction. The dissolved air in the fuel tank will eventually deplete after reaching cruise altitude. The depletion time is dependent upon airplane altitude, fuel temperature, and type of fuel. Once the dissolved air is depleted, the engine may be capable of suction feed operation at cruise power. The main tank bypass valves may also be used for suction defueling. Right? Now, let's talk about the fuel shutoff valves. A spare fuel shutoff valves are located at the engine mounting wind stations. As you can see here, the valves are DC motor operated from the hot battery bus. The engine fuel shutoff valves are fuel actuated solenoid control valves powered from the battery bus. And you can see those two there. Both the spark fuel shutoff valve and the engine fuel shutoff valve close whenever their respective engine fire switch is pulled or engine start lever is placed to cut off. Now let's talk about the center tank fuel scavenge jet pump. Let's see what we have here. With the main tank fuel pump number one forward switch on, this one here, the center tank fuel scavenge jet pump operates automatically to transfer any remaining center tank fuel to main tank number one. Fuel transfer begins when main tank number one quantity is about one half. Once the fuel scavenge process begins, it continues for the remainder of the flight. Let's talk now about the APU fuel feed. When AC fuel pumps are operating, fuel for the APU is supplied from the left side of the fuel manifold. So you can see the APU fuel shutoff valve here, and you can see the left side of the fuel manifold here. If the AC fuel pumps are not operating, fuel is suction fed from main tank number one. Okay, now let's talk about the refueling and the refueling panel. So this information, we can get it from the supplementary procedures in the FCOM volume one. As you can see, section 12. Refueling. Fuel load distribution, main tanks number one and number two should normally be serviced equally until full. Additional fuel is loaded into the center tank until the desired fuel load is reached. Let's read this note. Main tanks number one and number two must be scheduled to be full if the center tank contains more than 453 kilograms of fuel. With less than 453 kilograms of center tank fuel, partial main tank fuel may be loaded provided the effects of balance have been considered. Fuel pressure applied from a truck or fuel pit. A nozzle pressure of 50 PSI provides approximately 1,136 liters per minute. Normal refueling when a full fuel load is required. The fuel shutoff system closes the fueling valve automatically when the tanks are full. When a partial fuel load is required, the fuel quantity indicators are monitored 
and the fuel valves are closed by manually positioning the fuel valve switches to closed. Here are the switches and we have to select it closed when the desired fuel quantity is aboard the airplane. Refueling with battery only, when the APU is inoperative and external power is not available, refueling can be accomplished as follows. Battery switch on. Note the refueling system will operate normally. Operation is limited only by battery life. Refueling with no IC or DC power source available. When it becomes necessary to refuel with the APU inoperative, the aircraft battery depleted and no external power source available, refueling can still be accomplished. Fueling hose nozzle attached to the refueling receptacle, fueling valves open for the tanks to be refueled. Note, main tanks number one and number two and the center tank refueling valves each have a red override button that must be pressed and held while fuel is being pumped into the tank. Releasing the override button allows the spring in the valve to close the valve. Caution must be observed not to overfill a tank, since there is no automatic fuel shutoff during manual operation. When the desired amount of fuel has been pumped into the tanks, the refueling valves for the respective tanks can be released. So here we have the panel. And remember, we talked about this in our previous uh, video. Anyways, uh, I just want to go back there for you to remember what we have here. So we have the fueling valve position lights. We have the fueling valve switches. We have the fuel pointed indicators here and we have the fueling indication test switch, all right? So guys, with the refueling and refueling panel, uh, we finished part two of the fuel system. I hope you guys find these videos useful. And if you like them, please give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed to my channel yet, please do it now. And if you think these videos could be interesting for somebody else, please share them. And that's going to help me a lot to grow the channel. Next week, we will finish the fuel system with part three, and we will be talking about normal operations and normal operations and what the FCTM says about the fuel system. Okay, guys, until then, please take care, and I hope to see you soon.